In the vast remote forests of southern Oregon, local psychologist Matthew Johnson had what's been called one of the most credible Bigfoot sightings of the last 20 years. Less than 70 miles from the most famous of all Bigfoot encounters at Bluff Creek, California, Johnson says he saw the creature on a remote trail at the Oregon Caves National Monument, a popular tourist destination. Eight years later, the Daily Courier and the DailyCourier.com took Johnson back to the exact spot where it all happened. This is the tree, right here. He described the animal he saw as an upright walking ape-like creature more than eight feet tall with long dark brown to black hair covering its body, weighing 700 to 900 pounds. He returned to the scene during the same time of year and same time of day to tell his story and possibly catch another glimpse of the creature that he says changed his life. Everything that I knew about the great outdoors came crashing down. I'd never, ever been so scared in my life. The encounter spurred Johnson to begin gathering research on Bigfoot through expeditions into the Oregon wilderness. For the first time on any broadcast, we'll examine actual video footage from those expeditions and interview the investigators who looked into Johnson's sighting. I did find what appeared to be at least one track. On uh, a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give him a 10. As a matter of fact, uh, he seemed very credible. Finally, Johnson will reveal what he calls indisputable evidence that the creature calls this area home. Located in southwest Oregon near the California border, the Oregon Caves are about a half an hour's drive from the small town of Cave Junction. The trip up a narrow, windy road takes visitors to the monument and deep into the vast Oregon wilderness. After a trip through the caves on July 1st, 2000, Johnson, along with his wife and children, decided to hike the Big Tree Loop Trail and enjoy the warm summer afternoon. As a psychologist, Johnson has a private practice in Grants Pass, about an hour northeast of the caves. He's an experienced outdoorsman who grew up in Oregon and lived for years in Alaska. He says the animal he saw on that day eight years ago looked a lot like the creature in the famous 1967 footage taken by Roger Patterson at Bluff Creek, California. The following is his description of the events that took place after he and his family decided to head into a more remote part of the National Monument. It was around 5 p.m. when my family um, reached this part of the trail about a mile up the mountainside from the um, gift shop and in the caves tour area. And um, we had walked through here uh, about a hundred more feet that way and coming downwind through these thick trees in the brush was a very strong stench that um, smelled as strong as a skunk, but it wasn't a skunk. Um, it had a, a distinctly different smell, but it was something that grabbed your nostrils. And um, we had never smelled anything like it um, hiking and camping in Alaska. Uh, we weren't scared. We just knew there was something up there. Most of the nearly 100,000 visitors who come to the Oregon Caves each year don't take the difficult hike of more than three miles over steep, heavily wooded terrain and almost none hear what Johnson says came next. Along this part of the trail when we were hiking here, um, the animal was paralleling us down there in the brush and the trees. We couldn't see it, but we could hear it do the bass-like guttural mammal, whoa, 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 whoa. And um, we would stop and listen and it stopped making the noises. And we were whispering to each other about, did you just hear that? And yeah. And um, earlier on, when we first heard it, it, it was kind of faint. And I thought for a moment that I was so out of shape and my blood vessels were pounding near my eardrums that that's what I was hearing. But the second time I heard it and stopped the family, they all said, we hear it. So then we would walk for a little bit and it would start up again. Whoa, 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 from down there. Then we'd stop and listen and look again. Couldn't see anything. And then we kept walking again up the trail. 
And then eventually we got to a point where it stopped making the noise. And we kept walking just a little bit farther until we got to the spot where the kids wanted to break and um, we're playing with a bug on the path and I had to um, answer a call because Mother Nature was knocking on my door. As he ventured farther up the trail, he arrived at the spot where he says he saw the creature. He did his best to set the scene describing the positions of his various family members. The kids were squatted down like this playing with a bug on the dirt with a stick. And my wife was standing right there watching them, looking this way. Johnson said the Bigfoot was about 60 feet below the trail, standing behind a large tree and looking over a smaller one. That's the tree, this big tree right here, is the tree it was standing behind when um, it was watching them on the trail right up there. Leaving his wife and kids on the trail, Johnson ventured uphill into the brush to relieve himself about 60 feet from his family and slightly back down the trail. After he had finished, something down in the trees below him caught his attention and it gave him the shock of his life. And then out of the left corner of my eye, I saw movement and I turned and I looked. And that's when I saw um, Bigfoot walk off the pages of myth and legend into reality. And I saw it walk 1001, 1002 over behind this big growth tree. And then I saw it looking from um, behind this tree over a new growth tree, watching my family down on the trail. Now, in that moment of time, that uh, seemed like forever, everything that I knew about the great outdoors came crashing down. Johnson is six foot nine and nearly 300 pounds, but he said he was dwarfed by the animal he saw through the branches. And for what was only a couple seconds, but seemed like a slow motion movie, I was in a major state of panic, not knowing what to do. And then I had these really protective instincts kick in. And, you know, this was my family. And um, I didn't know what to do other than what to do with a grizzly bear in Alaska. And I ran a straight line from up there down toward that tree. I hit the trail. And I turned left and came running up this way. I avoided eye contact with the animal because I didn't want it to think I was challenging it. Got up here to my family and said, let's go, let's go, let's move. They're looking at me like, what's your problem? And I'm like, go, now, move. And I move them up. And they know I'm a pretty laid back, mellow guy and that something was up, so they started moving. And um, I'd never, ever been so scared in my life, ever. After walking a few hundred yards, they stopped and Johnson told his wife what he had seen and they came up with a plan to continue on the trail to get back to the caves. And I said, if this animal comes up, you take the kids. And you run as fast as you can. And you get out of here. Don't you stop. If you hear anything going on, you don't stop. You run. And I'll run interference. And the interference, if this animal came up, would have been minimal because I'm 6'9", 300 pounds, size 16 feet. But the animal I saw made me look small. Johnson says he suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder and he relives the extreme fear each time he retells the story of the encounter. For a couple weeks after the encounter, I had nightmares where I'd be standing up there and I would watch in my dreams the animal come up from behind the tree and attack my family. And I would wake up sweating, breathing, heart pounding. 
In the years since his encounter, Johnson has gone into the wilderness on expeditions, trying to get another glimpse of the animal he saw that day. He said what he's learned since has made him realize he shouldn't have been so scared. Over the last eight years, they've been outside our camp. They could have attacked. They don't attack. They're just curious. They're smart. They're docile. But even though I know, I know that from eight years of research, I'm still here feeling helpless. Johnson may have spooked the creature when he came down the steep bank to get to his family because he said they didn't see, hear, or smell the animal after Johnson saw it. They walked the rest of the Big Tree Loop Trail without incident. But Johnson says his encounter with the creature has changed him forever. Every guy has a hobby, and on July 1st, 2000, my hobby found me up there on the mountain in those woods. And um, as long as I'm physically able and my friends are willing, we're going to continue to scour these mountain tops until we find indisputable proof that this animal exists, get it identified as an existing species on the endangered species list, and protect its habitat. In part two of Encounter at the Caves, Johnson decides to report his sighting and sets off a massive media storm, and he meets local wildlife biologist Bill York, who decides to help Johnson try to track Sasquatch, a name derived from American Indian terms for the legendary animal. Together with other investigators, they find evidence they say shows that the creature, indeed multiple Sasquatch, live in the area near the caves. They document their evidence on film and make casts of footprints they find. And finally, investigators from various backgrounds come to the region to try and figure out what he saw. Based on the, the events that occurred right after the encounter, I have no question at all that he did not make this up. All this and more on part two of Encounter at the Caves.